Oh, man. And it's a cool day. It's a cool day. Uh, it's, fun, it's fun stuff that we get to do. I got a lot of people here that I love. I got all my, my kids, my family. Um, my neighbors are here. Shout out to Greg and Jen. Y'all the best. Uh, man, it's cool. But yeah, like, so, so as you were saying, I get to be a student pastor here. So I get to hang out uh, with, our, with our kids, our students from sixth grade up to seniors uh, pretty much as, as much as possible. Um, and so it's, it's so cool. Um, you guys are awesome. Love you guys so much. I'm proud of y'all. Y'all are the bomb, literally. Y'all are so cool. Um, so recently, we went to the Gateway Student Conference. Word, word. Um, it was this big conference. Uh, there's like 4,000 students. Um, they all just come, and we have like these great speakers and amazing worship. Um, and so everyone's there. It's great. We brought like 100 kids, so we had uh, like seven vans worth of kids. So... Um, yeah, yeah, you say, woo, but also, like, some of those are sixth grade boys, so, um, like, we have to get everybody from the vans to the church, from the church back to the vans, vans back to the hotel, which is a task um, whenever you are not paying attention to any instructions, and so every time before we left the hotel, I'd, I'd get everybody in the room, and I'd be like, all right, guys, here's the plan. We're going to go to the church. We're all going to go in there. As soon as workshops are over, we're coming back to the vans. I look him in the face. Trey Sean, as soon as workshops are over, we're coming back to the vans. That's right. Okay, everybody got it. Back to the vans right after workshop, right? So, of course, you know, we come out. Everybody's in the vans, all 100 kids except for one, one kid, one boy. And so we're like, nobody, know, his buddies, like, nobody knows where he's at. You know, like, they, they, they were acting like he vanished. They were like, I was standing right there. And then I turned around and poof, I don't know, like, he just, I don't know what happened to him. I'm more like, okay, cool. So we go in there, again, 4,000 kids, so we're just searching in this sea of 4,000 students, like, all right, where's he at, where's he at? There's this one kid playing in the arcade. I, we literally turn around, we're like, hey, oh, okay, hey, sorry, buddy, yeah, keep playing, yeah, we don't know you. Um, so we're searching, you know, starting to panic, and we, we see him just playing ping pong, just not a care in the world, you know, just... Ping in the pong and pong in the ping, you know, just having a, having a blast, not, no worries. And, and we walked up and we're like, hey, we've been looking everywhere for you. Like, we're, we're, we're heated at this point. We're like, we've been looking everywhere for you. What are you doing? And he looks, he looks up and looks me square in the face with his ping pong paddle in his hand and says, I've been looking for you guys too. <laughs> and we're like, what? No, you haven't. You've been, that's not looking. That's, you're playing ping pong. But, yeah, man, we just had a blast. And so, like, they were just out of control. And, like, we went back to the hotel. And they're like, let's stay up all night, you know. And we just heard, like, these heroic tales of these sixth, seventh grade boys eating coffee beans, just eating them to stay awake. And they stayed up the whole night, you know. It was just, like, victory. They stayed up the whole night. But we go back to the conference, obviously, the next day. So, so they stayed up the whole night. And, you know, so we got morning, afternoon sessions, whatever. So they're, they're sitting in the, in the sessions just, like, out of there, just totally knocked. And I'm not talking, like, doze. They're, like, REM sleep. Like, their eyes are moving real fast. Like, they're having dreams, right? Like, they're asleep, asleep. And so, like, I wasn't mad. You know, I'm not mad at them. I'm not like, gosh, dang it, your parents would be so mad at you. They spent so much money to send you here so you could learn, and you're asleep. Like, I'm not, I'm not mad. At, you know, I would just, you know, gently, because I had one right next to me who fell asleep, like, a hundred times. I'd be like, hey, buddy. Hey. He'd wake up. I'd be like, hey, man. It's okay. I just don't want you to miss out on this. Okay? I just don't want you to miss out. And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I'm like, take notes. He's like, I got you. You know, I look back. I'm like, cool. I'm focused for like another three minutes. I'm like, hey, bud. You know, he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, man. There's really, there's really something awesome going on here. I don't want you to miss it. He's like, all right, all right, all right. And, and I feel like so many times, like, that's us with God. Like, we, we've just fallen asleep on a little thing, or we've fallen asleep on a big thing to where we're missing out. And he, he just wants to gently wake us up this morning and be like, hey, 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 bud, I don't want you to miss out. I have something so great for you. I don't want you to miss out on it. Okay, so I, I want to encourage y'all this morning, don't, don't, be, don't be scared of it. Don't be like, ah, no, 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 he's not, he's not going to wake me up. Just, like, let it happen. Like, let, he is going to be gentle. Like, he just wants you to wake up so that you aren't missing out on what he has for you. We good with that? You heard? Cool. All right. 
So last week, we were in Galatians. I mean, we've been in Galatians for like um, a long time. Um, we're in Galatians. We're going to stay in Galatians 5 this morning. We talked about freedom last week. This week, we were talking about fruit, specifically fruit of the Spirit. Um, so if everybody can go to Galatians 5, and we're going to read 16 through 26. Yes, we're going to read all 10 verses because Jesus wants us to because it's in the Bible. All right, so here we go. But I say, walk in the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. But, oh, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Whew. Guys. Like I was saying earlier, like, I really feel like I could have just come up here and read that a couple times and been like, cool, we're good, right? Like, that was very clear. Like, it, it puts it so clear. But if it wasn't clear, um, I, I've, I've found scientifically proven that if it's not clear, people understand it better if you wrap it. Um, so, John, if you, could, if you could give me the beat. And if you know the, if you know the rap, if, you knew, if you've been at noise camp, you know the rap. I need you to say it with, that's not the right one. He's trying to throw me a curveball. That's the right one. <laughs> Here we go. Y'all ready? Y'all ain't ready for it. Here we go. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruits of the Spirit is how we roll. God's love is always greater. Our Savior ain't ever been a hater. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. So now we, yeah, now we're, we're clear on that, right? We're all clear. Fruits of the Spirit, we got them? Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, the kids, the kids wrote the whole thing. It was so dope. Yeah, they wrote all that, all the rhymes. Okay, did the rap. Moving on. Come on. I'm like, oh, that's it? Yeah, I'm done. All right, uh, okay. So, fruit of the Spirit. Here's my first point. I don't really have points. I didn't really say, like, this is my points, but yeah. Here's, here's my first. We're getting real. All right, so, fruit of the Spirit. Very important that we know this. It is not the fruit of you, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, it's not the fruit of me; it's the fruit of the Spirit, and that makes it again in in sixteen through twenty six. It makes it so clear, like the the things of the flesh are all this stuff, right? All that stuff, and the things of the Spirit are the Spirit. Okay, because it's God in us that will produce the fruit. Us in ourselves, it listed out what we produce, right? It's doo doo. Okay, our flesh produces. Doo-doo. It, it's just said it in like a lot of words, but they all could have just been summed up in doo-doo. All right. So our flesh produces a bunch of doo-doo. That's in my notes. Somebody was like, oh, you should say that again. It was funny. I was like, no, I'm like, I wrote it down like I'm planning on it. Um, so we need the Holy Spirit for the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and just a side note, man, he, he, he gives us all the fruit, okay, it's not, it's not like one or the other, like, it's not like, it's like, you get joy, you get peace, you get kindness, no, it's like, you get all of it, okay, he has so much for each one of us, and he wants to give it to us for free, all of us, he wants to give you all the fruit of the spirit, okay, you dig, all right, so, so it's not ours, right, the fruit's not ours, so how do we get it, and how we get it is, dig the root, get the fruit, dig the root, Get the fruit. Say it with me. Dig the fruit. Get the root. Again, dig the fruit. Get the root. Y'all are not saying it. It's so simple. 
That's why, I, listen, good job, guys. Okay, so listen, here's how you get the fruit. You dig the root, you get the fruit. <laughs> now say that one with me. Good job. Like, that was so good. They're like, no, I don't trust you. You're saying it wrong. That was great. Keep doing that, guys. Okay, let's say it all together. Dig the root, get the fruit. Awesome. Greatness. Okay, so John 15, 4. Like, that doesn't make sense, Josh. John 15, 4 and 5. Here we go. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you, in, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm. So I think there's a reason that he calls it fruit, right? Like he calls it fruit of the spirit on purpose. I think like... <laughs> I think, like, one reason is, like, vegetable of the spirit sounds dumb, obviously. <laughs> but on top of that, like, vegetable, like, fruit is like, ooh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll eat some fruit. Like, it's good. It tastes good, right? Vegetables are like, uh, like, if, if the serpent was tempting Adam and Eve with the onion, I think we might still be in the Garden of Eden. I'm just saying, like, maybe we might still be there. You know, if he's like, you know, the snake's in the tree, and he's like, hey, come over here. He's like, you guys want to? be just like God and have the knowledge of good and evil. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. What do we got to do? He's like, all you got to do is eat this onion. And they're just like, nah, man, I think we're good. Yeah, we'll just chill. Like, we could all be still chilling if it was an onion. Uh, but no, fruit's good, right? Fruit's good. Here's my definition of fruit. Fruit is just the good stuff that comes from growth. Fruit is just the good stuff that comes from growth, right? So when it, whenever a tree grows, right, it, you plant seeds, it grows, and then it produces the good stuff, the fruit, right? And you take the apple, you're like, mm, that's good, okay? And the fruit of the Spirit is just the good stuff that comes from our growing in a relationship with Christ, our digging into our relationship with Christ, digging into the Word. As we grow, we produce fruit, all right? So here's, here's a very important, like, caution, and... And, like, we've all done this. It's important to know, like, we can't just muscle it out and, like, make ourselves fruitful. We can't. We can't go like this. We can't, like, because, li listen, we've all done this. And I, I, I've done this, too, like, last week, where you're just, like, self-control. Mm, self-control. I got to have self-control. Mm. But what, is it, what does my face look like I'm about to do? Doo-doo. Okay? <laughs> And what do we know? What do we know about whenever we operate in our flesh and we try and create fruit? Our flesh actually creates doo doo, okay? So whenever we try and just go mm, and muster up a fruit all by ourselves apart from the Spirit and just in our flesh, it makes doo doo, not fruit of the Spirit. You heard? All right, so the Spirit is the one that produces these fruits. All right, so another thing about trees whenever they're growing fruit is that their roots. Um, they keep digging deeper, right? The, 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 the roots don't just grow for like the first 10 years and then they're done. And it's like, and the tree keeps growing and it keeps producing fruit. No, it, the, the roots continue to grow the whole life of the tree, right? The roots continue to get deeper and deeper and stronger and stronger. And in the same way, our roots have to continually get deeper and stronger in Christ. Our roots have to get deeper in the word. We have to keep knowing the word better. We have to get closer with the Lord. We have to know the spirit better. We have to get deeper with our roots. Um, so the way that the Bible puts that is we gotta continually abide in him. Whenever we're constantly making sure we're abiding in him, we, we should look like him. So in 1 John 2, 6, I didn't skip one, did I? No, 1 John 2, 6 says this. Whoever says he abides in him... Christ ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. He had to walk in the same way in which he walked. Um, so I spend a lot of time with Francis, um, and we spent a lot of time growing up with a couple of dudes in here, Brennan and Andrew. We spent a lot of time together, right? Just like all the time, we're just together, right? So if one of us just like starts doing something weird, like Oh, I'm going to make up this dumb saying. Like, the other ones just start doing it, not because we're like, oh, we want to copy it. We're just together so much that you just start to, you start to do whatever the person you're with so much does, right? And usually it's something dumb or whatever. But we start to do 
um, what what the other people do that we're around so much. Because we basically like we we abide in each other, right? We're we're to get we're together all the time, so we start to look like each other. Um, I'm st- I'm I'm with Joey and Francis a lot, so I'm still waiting on my arms to start looking like theirs. You know, um, I think it's gonna pay off soon. Uh, so I'm just going to keep hanging out with them. Weights are dumb. I'm not going to lift those. I'm just going to hang out with them. And uh, hopefully it works out, you know. <laughs> but uh, here's the deal. And this is what, this is what I, I think he wants us to, to wake us up to today. Um, this is what I think he's, he's tapping us going, hey, don't, don't miss this. Don't miss this. Um, don't, don't, get tricked by, don't get tricked by looking like Christ, okay. Don't get tricked by looking like him. Because the verse says, walk like him, right? It doesn't say look like him. And we can get, we get so good at tricking even ourselves. And it's not that we're aim, we set out, we don't set out to trick ourselves or other people. It's just that we're so focused on looking like Christ that we, that we, that's where we put all of our energy, right? We put all of our energy in like, oh, uh, um, let me, let me do this so that like maybe, maybe somebody sees me praying for this person. They know um, how spiritual I am, or no, let me let me hug this lady so people know like I love. And it, it doesn't even have to be other people. It's like we do it to ourselves. It's like I'm. I read this morning like I'm good. Like yeah, me and me and God were tight. Like I read the devotional app on my phone. But you're not really trying to dig into your relationship with Christ. You're just you're just going through the motions, or you're you're faking it until you make it. And we get we just get so caught up in that, and even in ourselves. And that's where I feel like it's easy to check yourself if you're like, oh yeah, I was doing that for someone else, but. We have to really check ourselves because it's like, are you doing that just so you can feel like you did it? Like, are you doing that so you can feel like, you can say, I prayed this morning so my, my relationship with God is good. Or are, or are we doing it to really dig into him? Because here's, here's the deal, guys. We can, we can fake fruit or make it seem a certain way, but this, this is seriously what I, what I feel like he's trying to wake us up. He woke, he woke me up to this this week as I was writing this, and, he, and, it is, and it's this. We have to be more concerned with living like Christ and less concerned with looking like Christ, okay? We get, we get caught up in looking like Christ instead of being concerned with living like Christ. Um, so, man, and it's, it's not like I can tell you, like, it's, I, can, I, can, I can tell, like, I can be like, oh, yeah, you're, you're just trying to look. You're not trying to live. Like, no, there's nothing. I, it's, it's only ourselves. We have to get real with ourselves and get real with the Lord and say, am I trying to live like you? Am I trying to walk side by side with the Father, or am I just trying to make myself feel good that I'm doing these things? I, I need to abide in him, okay? And, and I feel like today, dude, just in, this, in, in today's world, it's so easy for us to get caught up. Right, so easy for us to be like, oh, I'm trying to do this. But here, here's the truth, like, I can tell y'all I wash my hair three times a week, okay? And you're laughing because you can tell straight by looking at it, you're like, no, you don't. But if we were close, like if I was hugging you, you could really tell, right? Because you would breathe in and you'd be like, mm, you haven't washed your hair three times a week or ever. So <laughs> because, because we're so close. And look, look, this, this is the thing is like we can't. We can, we can try and, like, muster it up or, like, fake it all we want, but, like, there's no, there's no faking out God. There's no Jesus juking Jesus, all right? You can't catfish God, all right? So, like, he knows, right? He's close. He knows exactly who we are. So us just trying to trick ourselves is only tricking ourselves. We're not, we're not digging into a relationship with him. We're just tricking ourselves into thinking we're good. And that's not what he has for us. He has so much more for us. He has love, joy, peace, patience. He has all of these fruit for us, and we're gonna miss out if we're just going through the motions just to look like we have the fruit. He wants us to. He wants us to live with the fruit that he gives us. So, again, yeah, it's just a weird world we live in to where we get caught up. Um, but here's the deal: is God doesn't want more famous Christians. Okay, He wants more fruitful Christians. All right, He doesn't need any more bloggers or people on Instagram teaching or whatever so that everyone can be like, oh, look at them. They're so, they're so holy. They're so righteous, okay? He needs more people being fruitful exactly where you are, in the streets, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, has, he has you in a specific place. Like, he wants to use you. He wants to use you and be actually fruitful. Like, dig your roots into him so that you can really be having his love, his joy, so that whenever somebody runs into you, whether it's a coworker or whatever, they actually see, like, God's love coming through you. Not just your, fa- like, not just your fake love. Not just, not just your love, they need to see God's love. They need to see God's joy coming through you, God's patience to where it's like, what? 
dude, this is crazy. I'm like, everyone's heated. You should be mad, but you have God's self-control with you. That's what we need. That's the, what the world needs. That's, that's why we are God's plan for the world because he, he wants to shine through us. And, and that's the real work, right? Like, it's easy for me, Jeremy, Joe, like, we stand up here, you know, and we say, hey, do this, blah, 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 right? But y'all are, in, y'all are in, the, in the streets, right? Y'all are in the hood. In the real world, that's where, that's where we're going to make a difference, okay? That's where we're going to really, where we can, our fruit is going to let Christ shine through us, all right? You are specifically designed, each one of you, you're specifically designed to bear fruit in a certain way in a certain place, Okay, so I, like, you need to hear that today. Like, you were specifically designed by God in a certain way to bear fruit in a certain way in a certain place, all right? Like, we got it. We got it. Because, it, again, it's not our fruit. It's his fruit. So, he desperately wants to shine through us right where we are. Uh, amen? So, here's my, kind of my challenge, my check uh, for us today is check your fruit. Check your fruit. Don't, and don't stand in the mirror and say, here's my fruit. And, like, look at it and be like, yep, I look, I look peaceful. I look loving. I look kind. I look gentle. I look self-controlled. Okay? You need to get real with yourself and get real with God and say, what's, what's really on my inside? Not what do I look like. What do I live like? What's my secret life like? I know what my public life is like, but what's my secret life like? Because that's, that's where he wants to have the most intimate, deep relationship with you so that you're so full of him that the fruit of the spirit comes out and not the doo-doo of your flesh. So are your roots in him? Are you constantly digging deeper, digging your roots deeper and deeper and deeper so that you can continually grow more fruit and produce more fruit of the spirit and, and live more like him? Man, I just feel like God wants to wake us up this morning. He's just tapping us. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. I don't want you to miss out. I don't want you to miss out. And that's to every one of us. He has so much for us. He has all these things for each and every one of us. He just doesn't want us to miss out. And I get it, man. We fall asleep a lot. We're tired, right? We fall asleep a lot. But he's just tapping us. Hey, bud. It's okay. Wake up. I don't want you to miss out on this fruit. I don't want you to miss out on this joy. I don't want you to miss out on this love, on this peace, self-control. I don't want you to miss out, okay? He, he has so much for us, and man, he just wants us to take it. He wants us to have it all. So let's let him fill us up. Um, let's pray. That's all I got. Cool? Dear Lord, man, we just thank you for meeting us right where we are. Thank you uh, for who you are. And thank you f- for giving us your fruit, Lord. Thank you for the, the gifts that you so freely give to us. And, and we know we don't deserve it, and, and we've done nothing to earn your fruit, Lord. But God, I just pray that we can all uh, get real with you so that your, your fruit can shine through us, God. We love you so much. Amen. All right, so. I love you guys. Man, this is such, such a cool family we have. It's such a cool family we have here. My neighbors, they asked me, hey, uh, yeah, we'll come, but like, do we have to dress nice and stuff? I was like, nah, nah, come as you are. Come as you are, man. We have such a cool family here. Um, so as the prayer team comes forward, um, and if you, if you have anything you need prayer for, if you have anything you need prayer for, um, that's what they're here for. If you, specifically, if you feel like you've been asleep and God's trying to wake you up and you don't want to miss out, you don't want to miss out on the fruit that he has for us, you don't want to miss out on everything he has for us, come pray about it. And, and especially, man, if, you, if you're here today and you have never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life and you're like, man, I, I want some of that fruit, 
I want, I want some love in my life. I want some joy, some peace. I want some of that in my life. Man, he has, he's waiting right here. He's just behind you the whole time. Like, hey, turn around, turn around. I'm right here. I have this for you. Okay? So if, you, if you've never made him the Lord and Savior of your life and started a relationship with him that, that gives you that fruit, man, today's your day. Today's your day right now. So um, you can come forward for prayer. We got them all right here, all these beautiful people. Um, if not, have a great week. I'm done talking now. I uh, love you guys. Peace out. <laughs>